the world of rna again that of a uh, small non coding rna uh, under which falls what is called as a small nuclear rna so let us look at the learning outcomes of this session small nuclear rna are classified under small non coding rna as they have an average size of 150 nucleotides although recent studies do suggest that sometimes they go even beyond one uh, they go even beyond 300 to 350 nucleotides and the small nuclear rna accounts for about 1% of the cellular rna most small nuclear rnas are localized in the nucleoplasm and with most of them again functioning in rna processing especially in intron splicing these small nuclear rnas are associated with proteins to form complexes of ribonucleoproteins and when they are present as ribonucleoproteins they are termed as nerves and many of these ribonucleoproteins also have catalytic activity and therefore the rna within the ribonucleoproteins act as ribozymes the pre small nuclear rna undergoes post transcriptional modifications and those modifications are generally at functionally active regions of the small nuclear rna now there are two classes of small nuclear rna one is what is called as the sm small nuclear rna and the other is what is called as the lsm rna so the sm over here or the lsm over here refers to uh, nuclear proteins that are present they basically known as smiths antigen and therefore the name sm now under the class of sm small nuclear rna is u1 u2 u4 u5 u7 u11 12 and 12 and what has been observed is there are also some other u uh, u snrnas present 16 18 but their functionalities are uh, yet to be uh, or rather they have not been specified under this under any of these classes as yet this entire set of sm small nuclear rna are transcribed by rna polymerase 2 the under the class of lsm rna falls the u6 or the u680 c uh, here you have another one which is called as u4 actc uh, and that too falls under this sm uh, small nuclear rna now this set of uh, or class of sn rna is transcribed by rna polymerase 3 and what has been observed is that all of these small nuclear rna are processed within the nucleus then they are transferred to the cytoplasm where there is further processing done and after the further processing these come back to the nucleus again for functioning in case of the u6 and the u6 actc per se it never leaves the rna so it is always processed only in the nu uh, nucleus so it never leaves the nucleus basically now these form complexes with proteins to form what is called as u snrps so this stands for small nuclear rna uh, ribonucleoproteins and majorly all of them are involved in splicing of introns from the pre mrna uh, except for u7 u7 is Uh, specifically involved only and only in the processing of the pre mrna of the histones now when you look at uh, the entire biogenesis of the small, small nuclear rna you can see that within the nucleus from the dna the gene for the uh, sn rna is transcribed by rna polymerase 2 if it is of the sm class of uh, uh, small nuclear rna or by rna polymerase 3 if it is the lsm uh, class of um, sn rna so when it forms the pre sn rna so pre sn rna is yet to be uh, processed then in the nucleus what has been observed that the 5 prime end of the pre small nuclear rna is 
capped by in the same manner as the mrna are done so and so you have the 7 methyl guanine that is present as the cap on the pre mrna so the 5 prime add cap addition is done within the nucleus itself now this pre mrna is bound to buy uh, export in a group of proteins that uh, form the export in complex and this export in complex through the nuclear pore complex sends the pre mrna out once the pre mrna is out the export in molecules disassemble from it while what binds it to the 3 prime end of the pre snrna so the 3 prime end you can see has what is called as a small hairpin loop structure so therefore the smn complex binds to the 3 prime stem loop structure now this 3 prime stem loop structure further when you have the smn complex bound so smn over here stands for survival of motor neuron proteins so it was first identified identified in new motor neurons and hence the name stands as smn but it basically binds to any sn rna in any cell type so the smn complex binds specifically to the 3 prime stem loop and having bound to the 3 prime stem loop this acts as a assembly center for the remaining smith antigen proteins so this is the protein set that would come and bind uh, so that forms basically the sm core so that sm core comes and binds over here and then the further processing that happens is that the 5 prime cap which is already present is hypermethylated so there are two more methyl groups that are added to form a trimethyl and then once that is done the 3 prime end is trimmed further and after it is trimmed further at the 5 prime methyl or not the 5 prime methyl uh, sorry not the 5 prime cap the hypermethylated cap now is a recognition sequence or a recognition point for the importance to come and bind and when the important comes and binds the entire uh, snrna which has been processed in the cytosol is brought back into the nucleus through nuclear pore complex and inside the nuclear pore complex or uh, sorry inside the nucleus then you have the snrnp because now you you know that it is a ribonucleoprotein complex so this snrnp matures further and on maturing further then it acts as a spliceosome uh, machinery component to carry out intron splicing so this is how the biogenesis synthesis and functioning of the uh, small nuclear rna takes place now what is interesting to note is that the the uh, snrna once transcribed undergoes post transcriptional modification so you already say, saw some of the modifications that have happened but interestingly what has been observed is that the small nuclear rna has a very high number of uridines and these uridines are then further modified to form pseudo uridines so basically the um, snrnas are pseudo uridylated so wherever you can see the red over here they are all the pseudo uridines that means the uridines are converted into pseudo uridine now what is pseudo uridine basically so when you have a normal uridine then you know that the glycosidic linkage is an n glycosidic linkage and you will always have the one prime carbon of the ribose sugar attached to the one n of the pyrimidin ring that is the uridine ring but in pseudo uridine what happens is that this five uh, carbon is positioned here and the n is positioned here so you can see that you have a 180 degrees uh, turn and so the bond that is there over here is broken and in place of this the 5 prime carbon is bonded with the one carbon so therefore you still have a uridine attached but then you have the bond that is there between the ribose and the pyrimidine not n glycosidic any any longer it is a simple glycosidic linkage so therefore this is called as a pseudo uridine and as you can see the presence of the pseudo uridine enables another position which can have an interaction a possible interaction
Now, U1, U2, U4, U6, U5, all of them have pseudo uh, are pseudo-uridylated, but so is the U11, 12, U6A, TAC, and the U4A, TAC. Also, they have pseudo-uridin present at various positions, and most of these positions are functionally active regions of the snRNA. Apart from pseudo-uridylation, one another post-transcriptional modification which has been associated with proper functioning of the small nuclear RNA is 2'-O methylation. So the ribose sugar over here, you have the H replaced by a methyl group and so therefore that is a modification again observed in many of the small nuclear RNA and that has a, um, that has a role to play in how effectively the snRNA function. So this is basically just a glimpse of how the snRNA are able to help in the process of intron splicing. So we all know that in the pre-mRNA, you would have exons in, with interspersed intron regions. And you can see that every intron has a 5 prime splice site has a 3 prime splice site and it has a branch point and in the branch point you have one conserved A. So the 5 prime splice site is recognized or marked by the U1 snRNA. So the U1 snRNA which is present with the core protein is the SNRP basically and the 5 prime end of the U1 snRNA has sequences or nucleotides which has complementarity to bind to the 5 prime end of the intron and the proteins of the U1 snRNA are able to interact with SR proteins that are found bound to the exon 1 and along with SR proteins and the uh, uh, SM proteins you would have the U1 snRNA positioned properly on the 5 prime splice site of the intron. The same is the case with the U2 snRNA as you can see and the U2 snRNA also has a sequence which is complementary to the branch point but what we already know is that the sequence is such that it is going to accentuate or position out the conserved A. So the conserved A which has a 2 prime OH will act as a nucleophile and carry out the first transesterification reaction at this point. So therefore, uh, the interaction that these snRNA make with the pre-mRNA are you can see the RNA-RNA interaction and that is the reason why you have these snRNA functioning so, uh, you know, sequentially and perfectly with the, uh, uh, the intron splicing mechanism. Now, what has been observed is there are two types of uh, spliceosome mechanism within the nucleus of the eukaryotes. So, one is called as the U2 type and the other one is called as the U12 type. And for both of these, what is observed is that there are slight differences that are present in the, um, you know, conserved sequences of the intron. So, this is specifically GU that is present at the 5 prime splice site. This is very highly conserved. And at this end, you have the AG, which is again very highly conserved. Plus, you have the branch site. Within the branch site, again, the A is highly conserved. And the same you can see over here in the U12 type. But what can or what is different is that it is not necessary that in the U12 type, the 5 prime splice site has a G. Instead, it can have an A. And the same is the case with the 3 prime splice site itself. Instead of being an AG, it can be an AC. So this is a minor change. Now, uh, therefore, when you look at the entire spliceosome machinery, you will find that there are differences in uh, the way it is uh, being carried out. But the end product of obviously is still going to be a lariat. Okay. And what is observed that sequentially as the SNRPs come and bind to the pre-mRNA, it will eventually form a tri-SNRP, okay? And that tri-SNRP that is formed is acting as a um, enzyme or it acts as a catalyst. So, it has what is called as a catalytic activity. So, the U2-dependent spliceosome machinery is the one which is 
prevalent in the cells and therefore that is called as the major spliceosome mechanism while the U12 dependent spliceosome machinery is used very uh, rarely it's not prevalent and so that is called as the minor spliceosome mechanism in both these cases uh, what has been observed in terms of the snurbs that are being used is that U5 snurb is a common in in both the mechanisms but other than that you will find that this uses u1 u2 u uh, u1 u2 u4 u5 u6 whereas in this case what is used is u11 u12 u4 80 ac and u6 80 ac so therefore uh, the snurbs that are used in both these mechanisms are slightly different except for the u5 snurb so u2 u6 complex c so this C complex shows catalysis and it uses magnesium as cofactor in the transesterification reaction. So it is effectively carrying out the transesterification reaction and hence this can be considered as a ribozyme. So an RNA that acts as an enzyme. Now apart from its major role being in, in transplicing, what has been observed or what has been reported is that small nuclear RNA are also involved in regulation of gene expression and also non-canonical processing of certain RNA systems. So therefore, there, there are uh, uh, roles other than just, just in transplicing as well. So let us make the conclusions. And of course, one other thing that is important to note is that if there is any anomaly in the structure of the tRNA of the uh, sorry the small nuclear RNA then then there are diseases associated with it so the conclusions are the small nuclear RNA are classified into SM SNRNA and LSM sorry this has to be SM SNRNA the primary function of the SNRNA is in splicing of introns from pre mRNA the SNRNA are complex with proteins to form SNRPs which specifically identify introns and catalytically remove these introns. The SNRNA gets processed in the nucleus as well as in the cytoplasm, especially in casual bodies and nucleolus, to form the mature SNRP. The U2 SNRP mode is the major spliceosome mechanism and the U12 SNRP mode is the minor spliceosome mechanism. So small nuclear RNA, which are small non-coding RNA, are involved not just in RNA processing, but its proper folding also ensures its ability to enable catalysis and any anomalies in the structure is definitely associated with diseases. There are many such diseases that have been, that have been linked with anomalies in small nuclear RNA. Thank you.